bright studio lights shined down upon the tiny little row of tiny little babies. All sets of twins, all awaiting their destiny. The producers circled the infants as they made the final decision. Choosing adorable looking creatures named Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, simply because they were the only babies who didn't cry when strangers picked them up, which was really all you needed when casting babies. It was now time for them to help make this house full, but little did these tiny trolls know that they would also make our hearts full too. You know, full of laughs, full of love, very, very full, like their bank accounts. The television show Full House became a pop culture juggernaut. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen have seen their fair share of headlines, yet you don't really hear too much about the dynamic duo anymore, as they long ago decided to step away from the spotlight. So it's time we look at just what the f happened to the Olsen twins. Stick a sock in a goodie pant. <laughs> you got a bad attitude. But to truly understand what the f happened to the Olsen twins, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when they were born on their birthdays, 1986, California. Ashley is actually the older sister as she was born two minutes before Mary Kate. And it is right here when we would normally fill you in on how the subject of our WTF got interested in acting and decided to work in commercials and low-budget schlock films until finding success. But however, for the Olsen twins, they hadn't even said their first words before they were cast on one of the biggest TV shows of the early 90s. At just six months old, the girls were cast as Michelle Tanner on the new ABC show Full House. The casting was not by design. The girl's mother simply sent a photo of her newborn twins to a friend of hers who happened to be a casting director. The friend then told the mom about an audition for a new show called Full House, and they decided to go, and you know, the rest is history. The production of Full House, and well, all productions of that matter, cast twin babies due to strict child labor laws that restrict the number of hours a child can work on set. You know, cause they're children. So if you have two kids that look exactly the same, you can get double the work. <laughs> Sneaky, yet brilliant. Our mom's friend took us in, wasn't and it? we didn't cry when they held us. And uh -huh. That's why they picked us. Really? So yeah. <laughs> Although the babies were perfect angels during their audition, that wasn't the case on set. As Uncle Jesse himself, John Stamos, recently confirmed a story that he almost had the twins fired one day because he couldn't get through a scene because they wouldn't stop crying because they're babies. The production brought in two different babies, but it just didn't work at all, so they brought back the Olsen twins. Full House would run for eight seasons. That's right, we got to see Michelle go from baby to older kid. And although it was never a number one show, it would consistently garner strong ratings, and the girls would win several Young Artist Awards. And yeah, I know, Full House, it's like pure sitcom cringy cheese, but that's why we love it. The Olsen twins were simply adorable, and they spoke to a demographic that was underserved at that time. So naturally, those in charge would find a way to exploit that. <laughs> and my little sister was in that demographic. So Olsen Twins videos were playing basically on loop at my house, which is why I've seen all of their films. I, I swear, that's why. I, that's, that's, that's the reason why. I swear. That's okay. I knew it had to be something really important. Uh -huh. In 1992, they would star in their first solo TV movie, To Grandmother's House We Go. 
which was directed by Full House creator Jeff Franklin. And this would give the girls their first opportunity to appear in something as different characters. The twins got to play twins. This Christmas-themed film would prove a hit for the network. And yeah, it's a fun, charming little Christmas movie. Lots of people liked it, so many people liked it that, yeah, the network would quickly sign the girls on to do another holiday-themed movie. This time it was Halloween with Double Double Toil and Trouble, where the girls used the power of sisterly twin love to defeat an evil twin witch or something. The girls would receive a Young Artist Award nomination for Best Youth Actress, even though they're, they're two people. Double Double Toil and Trouble is actually probably my favorite Olsen Twins movie, if I had to pick one. You know, it's scary enough to make a kid feel like it's Halloween, but it's also not scary at all, and it's fun, and it has, like, an interesting cast of characters. Just some spooky 90s stuff. Gotta love it. You are so cranky. Get a life. By this time, the girls were becoming a brand onto themselves and would set up the LLC Dual Star Entertainment Group to produce all Mary Kate and Ashley based products. They were business women taking care of business. Well, girls, little, little girls. This would launch a true global branding for the Olsen twins as their images were featured on all sorts of merchandise. You know, everything that you could market towards a pre-teen crowd. From shirts, to Barbies, to lunch boxes, I think there was a video game, posters, everything. It began to seem like the Olsen twins were not people, but property. And tragically, they were feeling that too. But yeah, let's not talk about all that sad behind the scenes stuff just yet. Let's talk about their fun movies, their cinematic masterpieces. Because yeah, at around this time, their main draw was still that direct to video stuff. They made all sorts of movies, every kind, all over the world, every genre. Like the 1994 Western, How the West Was Fun and the musical mystery series The Adventures of Mary-Kate and Ashley, where they would solve any crime by dinner time. Any crime by dinner time, you say, Mary-Kate and Ashley? Let's send these girls to Washington, D.C. What do you say, folks? Oh my god, sorry to get political there. <laughs> I'd rather eat dirt. Then there was a semi-companion series called You're Invited to Mary-Kate and Ashley's, which would feature several episodes such as You're Invited to Mary-Kate and Ashley's Sleepover Party and You're Invited to Mary-Kate and Ashley's Christmas Party. But at this point it was time to get those girls in movie theaters up on the silver screen. And yeah, they would get their first taste of that big screen when they cameoed in the movie adaptation of The Little Rascals in 1994. It's a blink and you miss it appearance. But they were brilliant. They would get their first starring roles in the 1995 romantic comedy It Takes Two, which they like to claim is a loose adaptation of Mark Twain's The Prince and the Pauper, but it's actually just a straight up ripoff of The Parent Trap from 1961. But yeah, It Takes Two, it was so popular that it made Disney remake The Parent Trap a few years later. So there's that with Lindsay Lohan, but there's only one of her. There's two of these and It Takes Two. And yeah, the movie It Takes Two, it features charming performances from the late, great Kirstie Alley and the great Steve Gutenberg. But yeah, It Takes Two, it's probably the best Olsen twins movie, if you're looking for, for the best. What do you think is the best? Comment your comment in the comments. Comment them twice, because there's two of twins. You got it, dude. <laughs> On TV, the girls garnered strong ratings and were shielded from any sort of poor reviews because the material was geared towards a certain demographic. 
and the critics didn't really feel like it was necessary to, you know, do a review of their sleepover pizza party or whatever. But with It Takes Two, they were now in theaters and received uh, reviews from real critics, and those reviews were not good. Abysmal, as they would say. Many called it simply unpleasant and numbingly predictable. But I thought the girls were pretty dang funny in this flick, but I also haven't seen it since the 90s, and I think my tastes have, have changed. But not much. Of course, it wasn't all bad. The girls would win Favorite Movie Actress from the Kids' Choice Awards, and would be nominated for another Young Artist Award for Best Actress Under 10. And audiences would show up to a tune of $19.5 million, so, uh, you go, girls. By 1995, Full House was off the air, and the girls were just nine years old. And they were two of the most well-known faces in Hollywood. We would watch them grow up as they continued to release highly successful direct-to-video titles, such as Billboard Dad in 1998, where their dad is so desperate for a date that they make him a frickin' billboard. There was Passport to Paris, where they go to Paris and meet cute boys. In 1999, there was a movie called Switching Goals, where they played football, soccer, and meet more cute boys. Then came Our Lips Are Sealed, where they would hide from the mafia or something in Australia, and of course, meet cute boys. We can also not forget the movie Winning London, where they would go learn about England with the help of a cute boy. Then the following year, they would do a movie called Getting There, where they would get their driver's licenses and go on a road trip with cute boys. Then there was When in Rome, where this time the cute boys were in Rome. And there was Holiday in the Sun, where of course there were more cute boys, but this time the cute boy was played by a man. Yeah, that's right, that's 15-year-old Ashley kissing a 22-year-old man. He's a grown man, he's an adult man. And there was a movie called The Challenge, which is a satirical look on how reality TV has affected our modern society and the human condition. And this would be the final direct-to-video movie they ever released. But these talented twins also had a successful music career, with albums such as Brother For Sale in 1992, and I'm The Cute One in 1993, while also appearing on several other TV shows, like All My Children and Seventh Heaven, before launching their own sitcoms, Two of a Kind, and So Little Time that were both cancelled after just one season. Although Mary-Kate would receive a Daytime Emmy nomination for her performance in So Little Time, but Ashley, she got nothing. In 2004, after having a cameo in Charlie's Angels' Full Throttle and a guest voice on The Simpsons, the twins would then try their hand at big screen success with New York Minute, Unfortunately, the film was a box office bomb, only making $21.3 million worldwide off a $30 million budget. And it would net the girls two Razzie nominations for Worst Actress and Worst On-Screen Couple. Sadly, the disaster that is New York Minute seemed to take its toll on the girls. They would later talk about how this stretch of their lives, well, essentially their entire childhood, felt just like a circus. And they were just, you know, animals forced to perform. That's right, the Olsen twins went on to say that they would not wish their childhood on anyone. Saying that it's hard for them to even look at pictures of themselves from that period of their lives. Because they don't feel connected to them at all. I know we may all look at having that type of fame and fortune as, you know, a good problem to have, but by the time they turned 18, they were worth over $130 million each. And the loss of your childhood, it can't be an easy thing to handle, and your childhood, well, 
it's priceless. It was around this time that the duo enrolled in NYU, and the health of Mary Kate became everybody's focus, as she appeared to be quote unquote skin and bones. Like you could literally see her bones. The tabloids were full of talk of eating disorders. The twins would deny, 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 even joking about it on SNL. But Mary Kate had to face reality, and it got so bad that her father hired a food monitor to follow her. Like a guy who would professionally make sure she was eating enough. After an intervention, Mary Kate entered a treatment facility. And you know what, I'm pretty damn sure that all of those issues can be traced back to the pressures of Hollywood. The Olsen twins were role models for millions of little girls all over the world. And now, Mary Kate became a different kind of role model for those who need to admit that they need help. It was a very different world when the Olsen twins turned 18. There were perverted websites that featured countdown clocks to the minute they turned legal. But it would be that 18th birthday that would begin to set the twins apart. Finally able to take control of their empire, they would become co-presidents of their LLC company Dual Star. The power duo would begin to branch away from children's entertainment and began releasing products targeted towards teens, such as jewelry and decorations and fragrances, as well as launching their own fashion line, which was first sold at Walmart under the title Mary Kate and Ashley, Real Fashion for Real Girls. During their beginnings in fashion, the twins would start to drift away from acting. While Ashley would only appear in small cameos, pretty much as favors to friends, such as the time she was kissing girl number three in the movie The Jerk Theory, or playing herself in that Joaquin Phoenix experimental film I'm Still Here. She even popped up in the City of Angels music video for Jared Leto's band 30 Seconds to Mars, whom she was reportedly romantically involved with. Wait, 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 one second here. The twins have connections to Heath Ledger, Jared Leto, and Joaquin Phoenix? There is a Joker joke in here somewhere, but I, I just can't really figure it out. You know, they're like real-life Harley Quinns or whatever. I don't know. Mary-Kate would still pursue bigger roles from time to time on TV shows like Samantha Who and Weeds, where she was a reoccurring character on season three, playing a drug-dealing, church-going free spirit, while also appearing in such films as Factory Girl and The Whackness which won the Audience Award at Sundance. And she gets to make out with Sir Ben Kingsley. Mary Kate would end her big screen career with a small role in the 2011 modern day Beauty and the Beast tale called Beastly. I only came to give you a second chance. Guess I blew it. It seems that over the course of the past 10 years or so, the Olsen twins have not just faded away from public life in front of the camera, but have kind of completely taken over in other areas, including absolutely dominating the fashion world. In the early 2000s, the Olsen twins were mainstays of magazines and tabloids, mainly due to their style, which was hilariously dubbed Homeless Chic. In 2005, the girls would launch their own luxury fashion label, dubbed The Row that was started when Ashley wanted to design a so-called perfect t-shirt for women. A year later, the sisters had designed an entire collection that was quickly bought by the renowned Barneys, New York. But the girls never lent their famous names to this fashion line. They decided to not even give interviews about it, wanting the fashion to speak for itself without their names attached to it. So yeah, they became successful in the fashion world not because of their celebrity, but because of their vision and their talent. Mary-Kate and Ashley, they're true artists, y'all, who just happen to be child stars. So yeah, the fashion line, it took off, and by 2012, Mary-Kate and Ashley were winning awards from the Wall Street Journal for Fashion Innovators of the Year. 
and the Council of Fashion Designers of America for Women's Wear Designers of the Year, something they have been nominated for nearly every year since, winning the honor six times, including for accessory designing. Ooh la la. Of course, in the year 2020, when our dear trusted leaders shut down the f***ing world, that took its toll on everybody. And for the Olsons, when Barney's filed for bankruptcy, this left the company in a bit of uh, financial dire straits. But by 2021, the company had bounced back, launching their first line of children's clothing for a whole new generation of little Michelle Tanners. Currently, the Olsen Twins fashion line, The Row, can be purchased at over 164 stores in 37 countries, and is said to do over $100 million in sales every year. Their house is full of money. At these prices, no wonder they don't need to act anymore. <laughs> Their private lives used to be plastered all over the place. Whether it was the National Enquirer implying that Ashley Olsen was involved in a drug scandal with her former boyfriend, for which Ashley sued the publication for $40 million, resulting in the magazine issuing an apology and clarifying that they never intended to imply that she was involved. A very similar thing happened to Mary Kate, being embroiled in the death of Heath Ledger, as at the time, Heath Ledger and Mary Kate were reportedly dating. And when Heath Ledger was found dead by his massage therapist, Mary Kate was the first person she called, even before the police. Mary Kate is said to have sent her private security guard to the scene. She was questioned by police about the drugs involved in Heath Ledger's death for which she had no knowledge of, as she was out of the state at that time. But that wouldn't be the only time that their relationships made headlines. Ashley has been linked to people like Lance Armstrong and Justin Bartha. But she would find true love in 2017 when she began dating Luis Eisner. The pair would wed in December of 2022, while Mary Kate would marry Oliver Starkozy the half-brother of the former French president. But like five years later, in the year 2020, Mary-Kate would file for divorce. Oh, we are so over! To get through the struggle of the divorce, Mary-Kate would turn to her equestrian background. Horses can heal a lot, y'all. She began riding in 1992, at just six years old. And over the years, she has become world-renowned in the sport, finishing top five in several recent events. Yeah, that's right, she's like a fashion billionaire, a successful movie star, and a champion horse rider. Gee whiz. And yeah, Mary Kate's uh, love of horse riding is kind of funny and odd considering Full House ended with her character getting amnesia from a horse accident. And you know what? I'm just saying, this is just a theory here. Mary Kate did say that she wants to forget her childhood, doesn't like thinking about her childhood. So uh, yeah, maybe on a uh, subconscious level, she took up the equestrian arts, again, because she was trying to uh, forget. Uh, no, no, that, that, that's a horrible, ridiculous thought that I had. That's stupid. The Olsen twins are one of, two of, the most famous children to ever live. Probably the most famous twins. But you know what? Like we all do, they grew up. And when they grew up, they realized that their passions were not in front of the camera, but behind a needle and thread. Their styles made them icons, and their drive made them moguls. It is doubtful that we will ever see them on screen again, as even Uncle Jesse himself tried to get the girls to come back to Fuller House on Netflix, but they declined, saying that they didn't see themselves as actors anymore. And who can blame them? Their childhood was not really their own. 
They were paraded around for the financial betterment of everyone around them while they suffered in silence. And that's so freaking sad. Gosh. Especially because their work brought so much joy to so many children around the world that it's just, it's really, yeah, it's really sad to think about the, them suffering while they were making everybody happy. But Hollywood is fucked up like that. And yes, I have to admit, I did watch Fuller House, and they do address that Michelle isn't here. Well, Michelle sends her love, but she's busy in New York running her fashion empire. So yeah, they were icons as children, and as adults, they also became icons. Two of the biggest names in fashion. And fashion's important, y'all, because without it, we would be naked, and that's gross. These talented twins are continuously ranked among the best designers in the industry. And for anyone who wants to see an Olsen sister thrive in the acting world, just take a look at their sister Elizabeth. She's become one of the biggest names in Hollywood and one of the most respected, reliable, talented actresses out there. So yeah, watch, watch her stuff. The Olsen twins made it out of the entertainment industry alive, but just barely. But what is so amazing and inspiring about their story is that they took control of their own lives and their own image. And that is why nobody should give a f about what the f happened to the Olsen twins. Because they're doing just fine. Sounds like I had a pretty nice life. You had a beautiful life. So Mary Kate and Ashley, both of you, you you got it, dudes. You got it, dude. <laughs>